Well, good morning to you. It's great to be back with you this morning. Uh, when Linda and I did children's choirs a long time ago, uh, we would say, pick your parents out or your friends out and wave to them. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start on this side. If you missed a wave from me, there it is. And you can't say, but he didn't even speak to me. <laughs> good morning. It's great to be back with you all. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We begin this morning with a classic hymn, Oh, Worship the King. Let's stand together as we sing. Thank you. 
Father, there's no one like you. There's none greater. And so we just come this morning to worship you. So I just pray that you'd get the praise and glory and honor that only you deserve from our life, from our words, from our singing, to the reading of your word, God. I just pray that you would just speak to us. God, that you'd be with our friends and family that need you. Holy Spirit, that you would move in our lives and move us and lead us to those who need you. Use us for the kingdom. We thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross. We are thankful for what you have done. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins before we have failed you. We just worship you right now, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. If you will, we got a video for you guys. We were on the 10th day of war, and it was the beginning Рішення прийняв чоловік відправити нас. Я їхала сама, вся родина залишилася вдома. Ми в безпеці, так. І, звичайно, перші слова чоловіку, що ми в безпеці вже все. Ми на місці, ми в Польщі, нас добре прийняли. Poland brought in the most refugees out of any country. And through that, the Lord opened the door for us to open a refugee center. People stay in the house anywhere from two days to long term. We have one lady that's been there almost since it opened and is there currently. Так, цей дім взагалі для мене став як другий дім, тому що ми майже рік тут. Холі, Крістін нас зустріла, ну, тобто, реально так, я знову відчула, що я в безпеці. І мені необхідно було бути і серед людей, тому що, ну, також важкі часи, якось, ну, переживати це все разом було мені легше. Це наша друга мама, можна сказати. We started a Bible study at the center. And one of the ladies one night was sharing with me that her family was against her um, studying religion or knowing anything about it. And she didn't know which one was true. And she said, so I just prayed and asked God if he would show me which one is true. Which one should I believe? What can I believe? But then the war happened and I came here. And she's like, and then I realized that, that God led me here and he led me to you. And so she's like, and now I get to study the Bible, and now I can learn. Those are the days that you leave super encouraged about what the Lord is doing. So those are good days. That, of course, is for our Lottie Moon uh, Christmas offering. Our goal is $29,000. We want you to pray on how you can um, give to that um, Mission work. Other than that, I don't have any announcements except for um, congratulations. You guys are, of course, the good Christians that are here um, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So you get um, special points in heaven. Um, but if you will, just stand and welcome those around you. And um, if, if you're a guest, remember, fill that card out for us.
Good morning, church. If you would grab your seats. On the first day of Ad on this first day of Advent, we think about the coming of Christ and we light the candle of hope. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, for his government and its, and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's army will make this happen. So God, we just thank you this morning. Lord, we just praise you for, for the season, the Christmas season as we prepare our hearts and we prepare our, our worship to you, Lord God. We thank you for the hope because without you, we have no hope. Um, apart from you, there is no hope. And the hope that we have of eternity and eternal life is through um, for your son, Jesus, that you sent for us. Um, that he came, he lived as a as a person amongst us, a sinless life, Lord God, and he died on the cross for our sins that we could not do for us. And now that he sits at your seat, alive and well in heaven, Lord God, it gives us the hope that we have for eternity. And let us just make that our focus. Let us make it our, our prayer for, for drawing closer to you this Christmas season, Lord. And we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> People were looking for a savior, a messiah. Our Advent song is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let's stand as we sing this carol.
Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. Thank you, Lord, for our families. Thank you for our church family. Lord, the many, many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts for the message that you have for us today to live within your will. We ask, Lord, that you bless this blessing, bless this offering, and give it and use it in a way that bring, would bring glory to you. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us of our many sins. In Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Sleep on the hill. Believe me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me. I pray, bless all the dear children in thy tomb.
Father, I just worship you right now. I pray that you would speak through me. Holy Spirit, have your way. I surrender all that I am right now. And I've never needed you more in my entire life than I need you right now. So just use me, speak through me, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All righty, as you can see, Pastor and Amy are not here, <clears throat> so they're not one of the good Christians. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, they are traveling, of course, we'll be back this week. Um, and so we want to just pray for their travels. But Karen as well, Miss Karen is traveling, she's away too. And so um, you can't just be praying for those um, staff members as they travel back home from Thanksgiving week. The weekend after Thanksgiving is always a interesting time <clears throat> to me because now is a time that you are supposed to start decorating for Christmas. So I just want to take an inventory. How many of you heathens have already decorated for Christmas? Raise your hand. And you're excited about it. That's what's crazy. Well... I used to be that way until I had kids, and we know kids change everything, and so a couple weeks ago, I asked Haley, I was like, hey, you want me to go ahead and get the Christmas lights out, and we'll start decorating, and she's like, are you kidding me? Like, before Thanksgiving? And I was like, yes, before Thanksgiving, I know it makes the kids happy, so we'll do it for the kids, and so we, um, of course, have already decorated, and but I just want you to know now, if you don't have kids, right now is the time to start decorating for Christmas, not a month ago. You might as well just leave your tree up all year if you're going to do that. <clears throat> um, but as we get started this morning, um, if you look at the bulletin, the, the sermon title is God's Will. And it's going to be 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And when Pastor asked me to speak a couple weeks ago, I began to work and, and pray on this sermon. And if you were here last Sunday... I thought maybe he had snuck into my notebook because he used 1 Thessalonians in his sermon and he actually said, if you want to know God's will, this is it. And that was, you know, I had a title last week and I was about to stand up and go, wait a minute, I'm preaching now. You can't preach that. But uh, so I guess that somebody needs to know what God's will is for their life because we, we've got a, another week in a row. But 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So I just want to talk about um, verse 18 real quick. It says, be thankful in all circumstances. And if you were here for a Thanksgiving meal, I kind of highlighted on this. It's easy to be thankful when it's easy to be thankful. I mean, if I go to my mailbox and I open it up and there's a refund or somebody says, hey, you've been thinking about you, here's you know, a card and some cash. Hey, it's easy to be thankful. It's easy to be thankful when it's good. So I feel like Paul, when he's talking right here and he sends this, he's saying, look, you need to be thankful in all circumstances. And if you don't know anything about the Greek, um, the word here for all, it means all. It's pretty simple. Um, all means everything even the bad. And so I think he is letting us know, hey, even when it's tough, we need to be thankful. And here's where I believe I can be thankful and still not be happy with the situation. I can be thankful and still want this situation to change. I can be thankful and go, man, this really stinks, but God, please don't ever let me go through this again. I thank you that I experienced it. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I learned from this. I'm thankful that you can use this, but I don't ever want to go through this again. I think about a couple years back <clears throat> um, when Haley had her miscarriage. Um, there's nothing like being a, a husband and seeing your wife delivering um, your kid, and it, there's nothing you can do um, other than, of course, pray, but in the in the physical, there's nothing I can do to take that pain away. And so I'm not going, hey, God, thank you for this. I love it. But what we have been able to do is speak and, and lean into other people or friend or family, you know, who have gone through that and go, hey, look, here's what we experienced. Here's how, you know, we handled it. Here's what God did. And so I'm thankful that we can now relate to people who have gone through that and go, hey, here's how God used it in our life. Maybe, you know, he, here's how you can heal from it. I don't have to 
want that again, but I can be thankful for it. And so today we're going to be thankful um, for things maybe that we don't want or want to experience again. And I think in order to be thankful, we have to have this little part of hope. There has to, in those bad situations, we have to have hope. And here's what I mean by that. I've got three points today. And Haley was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, and she said, you know, Brandon is preaching tomorrow. And um, he said, you know, I actually went to seminary, and let me give you some advice. When the pastor's out of town and you're filling in, just give three points and make it short. And I said, well, hey, that's what I've got. I've got three points, and it's going to be short. So um, the first one is we have to have hope for purpose. And what I mean by that is if I'm going through a situation that is miserable and I hate it and I don't like it, I can still say, God, I want, I'm thankful. I'm going to be thankful in this moment, but there's got to be deeper meaning to this. And so I'm going to hope that there, he's, there's going to be a purpose behind this. I'm going to hope that he can use this for something else, even if it's for somebody else's benefit, if it's for somebody else's glory or, or for somebody else's struggles, I can still hope that there's purpose to this. And so I think about the verse, 1 Corinthians 15, it says, but thank God, uh, 57 through 58, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable, always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless, or one translation says is ever in vain. And so, of course, this is talking about our labor and, and, what, and how we work, but everything we do, we do it for the Lord, and even if it's being thankful in tough times. And so I, I can hope right here that, man, what I'm going through right now stinks, but it has a purpose. And I'm going to hope that he's going to use it somehow for his kingdom. It serves some kind of purpose for his kingdom. I was working this past week. If you know, the offices are closed um, half of Thanksgiving. So I was working um, with Haley's brother. He has started a construction company. And there's a guy that um, they use if they need to get some mud work done, you know, sheetrock and trim and paint and stuff. And he's incredible. God has radically changed his life. He was addicted to drugs and, all, you know, just the crazy lifestyle. And, and if you know people who like that, who have just lived that wild, crazy lifestyle, and then they get saved, it's usually wild and crazy for Jesus. If you've ever met them, you, you know what I'm talking about. And so he is like that. And so he's working. And we, there's also another guy that is complete opposite. Um, I don't even like to be around him sometimes because of how filthy his mouth is. And it's just like miserable. And so you have the complete opposites working in the same house, remodeling this house. And... Uh, Tony, the guy who is like in love with God, is just all day, no matter what it is, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He'll just be painting trim, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And he'll go, you know, and he's cutting trim. And I don't know if you've ever cut trim before. That takes a psycho to know how to cut trim because you have to flip it over and reverse it and angle it and all this stuff. And he just, he made a wrong cut and he come in there and he stuck it up there. He goes, praise the Lord, I made a wrong cut, praise the Lord. He, you know, and it's just everything is praise the Lord. Well, he's doing something, and we had just finished the floors, laid some floors a couple of days earlier, and um, and he walks by these people's trash can and accidentally knocks it over. Well, it's got the fresh, wet ground coffee from that morning that they had made coffee, and it went all over this new floor, and if you know, it instantly leaves a brown mark, you know, and so he goes, and just when you think your day couldn't get any better, you do this, you know, and it's just he has this joy in this everything he does he's thankful for it and like literally he was thankful he said just when you think your day couldn't get any better and so he starts cleaning it up and he goes praise the lord pray and, and so he's thankful for everything and i told Haley like it's almost annoying like just be mad it's okay you can be mad but he wouldn't he was and so everything you know for him he was thankful and so number one we have to have this hope for purpose that whatever i'm going through even if it's tough, even if it's not what I want, even if it's miserable, I can still say, okay, God, I, I'm, I'm hoping you have a purpose from this. I'm hoping you're going to use this somehow. And then number two is the hope of peace. The hope of peace. And what I mean by that, I think of um, Paul and Silas when they're in prison. And I don't know that I would be thankful and worshiping if I were in prison. Let's just say, let me just tell you, I've, I went to jail one time um, a, a long time ago, and I wasn't thankful. And I wasn't hopeful. I was actually bawling my eyes out going, please, God, you have got to do something in my life. It wasn't, 
worshiping him. I wasn't singing, you know, hey, God, I'm going to build my life on you. It was just like, God, you've got you've to help me. I need help. And I was pouring my heart out, but it, I wasn't thankful. But this hope of peace Paul talks about in Philippians 4 says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him. For all he has done, all means all, and that's all that all means. Thank him for all that he has done. And then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And so I'm, I'm thinking about this peace, and, and that one translation says, this peace that surpasses all understanding. And so if I'm trying to be thankful in these situations that are hard to be thankful in, I've got to have hope that there's peace to come. And it's peace that's going to surpass any understanding that I have or maybe even people around me. They're going, dude, you're in a tough spot right now and you have peace. Why? Well, because I have hope. I have hope in a creator. And I have hope in a God that when I pray, don't worry, and pray about everything, God will give me this peace that surpasses all my understandings. When I should be in a chaotic mess and the world feels like it should be crumbling down to me, I'm going, hey, it's okay. I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to try not to get in this spot again. And I'm going to have peace that surpasses any understanding that I should have. When, when it seems like there should be chaos, I've got peace. So in order to be thankful, I have to be a person who has hope for purpose, hope for peace, and then the last one is the hope for eternity, and, and our pastor Jeff was praying for that a while ago when he lit the candle. He said, we have this hope for eternity, and that is Jesus. Romans eight eighteen says, yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that he will reveal to us later. So I have this hope for purpose that, God, you're going to use this somehow some way. I have this hope that you're going to provide the peace that I need to get through this. It's chaotic. I don't understand it. I, I just, I know that right now though, I should just be in, in a chaotic mess, but I've got peace for some reason. And then I've also got this hope for eternity that I know that what I'm going through right now, what, what's happening here on earth, what I'm experiencing right now, that there's eternity to come. And it says that what I will receive when I get to heaven is greater than anything that I'll ever go through here on earth. And I know that once I get there, this hope that I have, this hope for this eternity, none of this that I'm going through right now is going to matter. The hard times, the good times, the easy times, the tough times, it's not going to matter once I get to heaven. But I've got to have this hope that will help me get through it. I've got to have this hope that he knows exactly what I need. He's going to provide it. And once I get to heaven, none of it will ever matter. Because it's all for his glory. It's all for his kingdom. So we have a hope for purpose. God, you're going to use this somehow, some way. And I'm going to be thankful. I may not want to go through it again, but I'm going to thank you, God, for it. I'm thankful for the tough times. Because in all things, all means all, and that's all that all means. I'm going to thank you for the hard times, God. I'm going to hope that you have a purpose for it. I'm going to hope that you're going to give me peace in the middle of it, a peace that surpasses anything that I should understand or anybody else around me. And then I'm going to have this hope for eternity that one day, one day when I get to heaven, all the hard times that I went through, all the tough times, all the sacrifice, all the heartache, all the pain, it won't matter. Because when I get to heaven, the glory that I will receive from him surpasses it. So we just... In all things, pray and become thankful. And that is God's will for our life. Hey, I told you guys three points. It's quick and easy, and we're done. So let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you so much that you love us. We thank you that we do have the opportunity to be thankful, even when we don't understand it, even when it's we're not supposed to be, when the world is telling us, hey, this is something that you should do something about and really we don't we don't have to do anything about it except for just be thankful you tell us that is your will is that we would be joyful and give thanks in all situations
we spill the coffee on a new floor, we just say, thank you, God. Praise the Lord. And so this morning, I'm just asking God that we can be thankful whenever it's tough and thankful whenever it is good and easy. That you would use us for the kingdom to show others around us who are in such a, a, a world that's so selfish to say that it's not about us. And although, yes, this is a situation I don't ever want to be in again, I thank God for what He's going to do. And I thank God for how He's going to use it. And I thank Him for the peace that comes with it. And I thank Him for the glory that, that will be revealed to me when I get to heaven. Because in all things, we want to give thanks. And so we thank you, Jesus, right now that you died on the cross for our sins. And you made a way for us to experience eternity in heaven. And our hope is in you, the Prince of Peace. So thank you, Jesus, right now. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, as we close, um, Boyd is going to, the band's going to lead us. I'm just going to make myself available. If you need prayer, if you want somebody to pray with you, I, I would love to pray with you. If you just want to come down up, you know, turn these steps, this wood, I, tell, I always tell the students, look, this is just steps, just wood. That's all it is. But it can become an altar if you'll allow it. If you want to come down and pray. It's open. Um, if you want to become a member of our church, you're a guest, and go, hey, um, that student pastor, he's pretty cool. He gets us out early. Um, come on down. We'll, we'll, we'll put you in our books and, and have you as a member. If you just need somebody to talk to, I know the holidays can be a tough time. I'm here. I'm available. Let's stand together as we sing Jesus Messiah. He became sin who knew no sin that we might be called his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so
just thank you for loving us, even when we don't deserve it. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. You are the Messiah. And I pray that this Christmas season, um, lives will be changed for, for the kingdom. Um, I'm praying right now specifically for people who we never thought would be saved would come to know you this Christmas season because of who you are and what you've done. Just thank you. Pray that you be with Pastor and Amy and Miss Karen as they travel back. You keep them safe um, and just let them know how grateful we are for them. We thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, can we give Boyd and Linda a hand clap for stepping in? Do it. And then they never get the recognition they deserve, but our people up in the sound booth, will you just give a hand clap? We had a, had a, a rough morning this morning getting stuff going, but hey, that's, that's what they do. They show up and they work hard, so we're grateful. Thank you, guys. I started laughing because my wife is actually on the recording sound, and she stood up with those headphones on, and it's a, it's a funny sight. But, hey, you guys have a wonderful week. We love you.